There appears to be an ever-growing adversarial threat to the U.S. American-made market for the automotive industry, and a lot of that is coming from overseas in Asia. Now, BYD is the latest, and everybody's hearing about it. Build Your Dreams actually currently sells to about 70% of the marketplace is globally done through BYD. They're a popular expanding brand that's building vehicles definitely to a price point that people can actually afford. And while manufacturers like GM, Stellantis, Ram, Fords, all of those typical brands that we know today are constantly working on what they perceive or what they believe is an electric vehicle solution for everybody. But what we're seeing in the US and Canada are vehicles that are technolo technologically advanced, blah, 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 but they're also not just expensive, they don't have the range, and they're just out of reach for most people. A lot of people are also pushing back on the electric market in general, but of course the mandates keep squeezing down and we have those federal leaders, both US and Canada, as well as a lot of places in Europe that keep pushing and pressing to say, by 2030 or 2035, you thou shalt drive an electric vehicle. What we've seen since 2020 till today is electric vehicles in the US ranging going from about $50,000 up to about $60,000 on average price. And BYD are literally listing vehicles that have started around $38,000 and are down to about $30,000 $30, US average transaction price. So what we're seeing is this trend of competitiveness that's coming from Asia. Now, while there's some really aggressive trade tariffs coming in and it's really holding everything at bay for the time being, what we're seeing is a lot of these manufacturers in the US are scrambling. Ford can't sell the Lightning. We're noticed, have you seen what's going on on the used car market? Depreciation for the Ford Lightning is literally devastating to the brand. You pretty much have to go to Farley, the CEO of Ford, and ask the question, how can you possibly ask $99,000 for a Lariat extended range or long range pickup truck when I can flip that or buy a slightly used one? Look at car gurus, look at any of the famous places that are posting some of these used versions or even new that are just reflipped with 2,000 miles on them and they're going for forty dollars or $50,000. You've literally lost your shirt in a matter of just a flip of a hat. So Ford's struggling with that. How do we price these vehicles competitively? The F-150 Lightning is still down on sales, not selling the way they hoped they would. We've also seen the E, well, the Mustang Mach-E also selling, but they're not selling well. Tesla clearly has had several price cuts and sl slicing of their prices in the last year in 2023 to offer up more incentives for bringing new people into the brand. Well, on the flip side, they've basically shivved the people that bought the vehicle six months earlier and paid 20% more. So Tesla is damaging the reputation, definitely the economy, and they're hurting some of their customers that are trying to be brand loyalists, but they're not having any part of this. Of course, Stellantis, they just can't get it right. Now, while they're trying some of this latest and greatest incorporate electric electrification in some of their vehicles like the Challengers and Chargers, the true enthusiasts are not having anything to do with that, and time will tell. I truly believe, in my opinion, we're going to see what happens with those electric vehicle chargers is what happened with the F-150 Lightning. Trying to rebrand and reutilize, repurpose a name, but we're going to find probably them falling flat on their face. So clearly we're seeing a scramble. Ford's already saying, like, we need to counter this. We need to hit this hard and say, you know what, we need to come up with something more affordable, more competitive. So they're already talking about coming up with maybe a $30,000 electric truck that people can get their hands on just to try to compete with the BYDs of the world. But I don't know if that's going to work. And the only thing saving right now, the Ford, GM, Stellantis, Ram, and those brands, is the tariffs. We know, I've spoken about this before, with the trade tariffs are what's holding them back and keeping a little bit of a monopoly in-house, which unfortunately hurts the consumer because... We get a vehicle that's not competitive in terms of quality, fit and finish, <clears throat> and a lot of those vehicles just aren't built the way they should be, or at least not in the capacity that the cons customer or consumer would hope they would be. So what we're starting to see is a bad scenario here. We see the Chinese market really imposing itself, and while they don't Im intend to really build a, while they don't really want to build a, a manufacturing plant here in the US yet, and there's a lot of resistance to that, they are, in fact, looking at building something in Mexico, so it's already on our native soil, and we're going to have a real challenge on our hands trying to keep them at bay. Now, they're coming in. They're fast and furious. And while, of course, 
the trade unions and the associations for workers here in the U.S. and Canada are pushing back hard saying we need to increase the tariffs to make sure that those folks don't come in here. But you know what? I call it free market. Open the doors. Well, maybe not, right? I mean, we have to protect our workers in some way, but the flip side is, you know, we, you know, as the consumer, we need a way to be competitive. What's going to happen, though, unfortunately, the writing's on the wall. If those tariffs, tariffs drop, or if there's even a stiffer competition and more demand by the consumers and more desirability to get those foreign vehicles in here, for example, like BYD, it's going to push those tariffs out of the way. That's definitely going to hurt the workers here in Canada, U.S. I know here in Canada, we have a lot of manufacturing facilities down in Ontario and as well in Montreal and Quebec, but down in the U.S., lots, Detroit, they're all going to hurt. They're all going to feel the burn and the pain, and that's just a bad place to be. We definitely want to support the, the local workers. They got to keep you know food on their table, but the sad reality is BYD is coming in fast and furious, and while they've shown what they can do, and again, as I've said, they're, surf they're, they're supplying vehicles to the majority of the globe right now. The fact remains is, it's just a matter of time before they push their way into the U.S. Canadian market. Things are shaping up to be a very interesting time. Now we're seeing interesting vehicles like the Seagull by BYD. 0 to 60, 11 seconds, 190 mile range. It's certainly not all that competitive, but at a price tag of 9600 bucks, there are people that are going to seriously look at that and say, you know what, I just need a local commuter cheap as borscht. The way I see this at $9,000, you're looking at maybe $1,500 or $15,000 Canadian. That represents a very cheap, affordable, you know, you can spend that much money on a high quality carbon fiber bicycle. But this is where we're coming to and BYD is slamming the door, not opening, slamming the doors open. As well, they have another model, the Auto 3 by BYD and it's actually led by Wolfgang Egger and a design team that manufactured and designed Lamborghini, Audi, and they're bringing in a vehicle that's fresh, exciting, has lots of passenger space, and is going to promise to be very competitive at a very competitive price. So this is where a lot of these domestic products better pull up their socks and their pants at the same time. The problem is Ford says, yeah, we're going to counter all of this attack with creating some very cost-effective, and by 2025, 2026, we're going to have that vehicle. It's going to be cost-effective. It's going to meet all the criteria, and it's going to be so what the customers are asking. Ultimately, something that's affordable and fun and has range. So this is the problem, though. When Ford says they want to hit this out of the gates and they don't want to have this lagging effect where it's the inertia starts collecting profits, they actually want to collect on profits right away. They want to see profits out of the gate. That really means one thing. Actually, really, it means two things. Not one thing, two things. One is you've got to cut costs aggressively. What does that mean? Shortcuts, cheap parts, components, just what we don't need more to see in Ford. There's enough quality control issues there, enough to choke a horse already, and unfortunately this is just what we're going to be in for. So lower grade parts, engineering substandard components, in my personal opinion, and the other angle is labor. Labor is the other part, assembly of these vehicles. So how are they going to assemble these vehicles? Well, either they come up with a way that's more modular, quicker to assemble, or they're going to have to do something with lower cost, lower cost workers, unfortunately. What does that mean? I don't know. You be the guest. You be the judge. I have no idea. But that's what Ford is promising. And unfortunately, again, as I say, Stellantis, they're not even in the race. And GM right now is sort of trickling along, trying to wait. And I believe they're trying to see what's going on in the market and trying to analyze and make adjustments to to be more competitive on their own right, but not necessarily jumping full feet ahead. Now, Another part with this whole market is what we're seeing, the Teslas of the world. And, and look around. Look at some of the, the, the European brands, the Audi e-trons. A disaster. One year old and they're worth 50, 40% of their you know, base price new. As well, we're talking about the Porsche Taycan hasn't been a flaring success. And as well, Mercedes EQE, EQS, and all of those have been a colossal flop. They're just not selling. But the problem is, have you experienced late model German manufacturing? It's not built like the tank-like vaults like they did, you know, 20 years ago. No. 
You get in a late model Mercedes-Benz and the doors are rattly. It feels like a superficial skin of what they used to represent. They're putting bigger brand badges on it. They're putting some of the cheap plastics and little touches of leather in the right spots. But generally, the cars are lighter, flimsier, more hollow. The drivetrains are lighter duty. And none of the vehicles seem to be holding up as well as they used to. And what is that ICE issue coming up? Well, the internal combustion engine vehicles are not built like they used to be. And a lot of it has to do with because some of these brands in Europe are now having to fund and develop this electrified vehicle space. And in doing that, they need to redirect some of that money and they're cutting costs in other places, quality control, engineering, as well as technology. They're trimming that down in ways that they can just meet the intent, but that they can redirect some of the money towards development of their electric vehicles. It's that serious and all these other manufacturers in the real world are hurt. Now, can you imagine once BYD starts filtering and getting the roots in the whole industry? This is really potentially going to deliver a damaging blow to Ford, Stellantis, GM, and even honestly, the European market. So look out, this is literally one of those car brands that can flip the electric vehicle market on its head, as well as the internal combustion engine market, because indirectly it's impacting the quality of vehicles we're getting on the internal combustion engines front, we're seeing quality issues in the Fords and the GMs and the Rams, bad engines, rocker problems, rod bearing issues, quality control technology that's not sorted out. You know, we know about the Blazer EVs. I talked about that as well, where they just couldn't get some of the programming right. This is what's starting to happen. Shortcuts here to, you know, to propose that they get, you know, more competitiveness in certain aspects of the market. Again, I just can't help but share this simple story. We have a car manufacturer that once the tariffs are gone, represents a serious threat or potential competitive, aggressive marketplace that we might actually get some vehicles that are worth buying. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'd love to hear everybody's opinion on what this market could look like in the next couple of years. It definitely is interesting. And of course, with all of that said, since Ford's top and front and center of our conversation, what they did to themselves. You want to check out that video. It's absolutely ballistic. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.